Welcome back, Saints of Yahweh. Grace and peace be with you guys. So I'm excited to start these videos, guys. I had to uh, take a break uh, from making the videos is because I had to fine-tune my spirit to make sure that the videos I was uh, producing, guys, are the videos I'm supposed to be making uh, because I want to abide in His love. I want to abide in His grace and mercy because we all know that when we do this, we are most fruitful. So I want to be make sure that when I'm fruitful, guys, that when you guys are watching the videos, you become fruitful from it. Uh, therefore, we're going to be going over Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I'm going to begin a series, and the first series in it will be Matthew, and we're going to go over chapters 1 and 2. But the series, the primary mission of it is to begin to teach you guys critical information and critical understanding that is to help you begin to build up that spiritual person that is in you, the spiritual being, and it becomes very important for you guys to grow in the spirit. Right? Remember when Christ says you need to be born again to be even able to understand what I say. And therefore, when you believed in the word of God, which is spirit, therefore you believed in spirit, a spiritual person was born in you. Okay, And because you were born by the word of God, now you're able to understand the word of God. People who were not born according to the word of God can't understand everything I'm saying. They won't be able to stand it. But if you are a brother and sister in Christ, you will understand what I'm saying, and you will know that what I speak is true because I don't I don't teach uh, things that are false. I want to I I seek the truth, and I want to be able to give this truth out to you guys. And I know the knowledge that I receive, guys, isn't from me. Therefore, I'm very excited to uh, share this knowledge with you guys, and to begin to help you guys grow in the spirit. Is because when you begin to grow in the spirit, guys, your life just gets better. And it is very critical to grow the spirit is because the spirit is the new creature that Paul talks about. And there's because there's a, two people in us when we're born again. There's a former person, the carnal being, and then there's a spiritual person that is in us. And if we're not growing the new creature, right, by love, this it's still a baby. Therefore, the matured carnal being is still alive. And what has to happen is when you crucify the flesh, which is, in other terms, becoming alive to God, which is you got to learn what love is, you're growing the you're growing the spiritual being, the new creature. And when you grow the spiritual being, the new creature, the old creature dies. And then one day, the only thing that is in you is Christ. And that's what Paul meant, that it is no longer I who live, but it's Christ in me. It's because the flesh, is the, flesh the carnal being, the person that you used to be, doesn't exist anymore. It's dead. Um, and your life begins <laughs> to get so much better um, by His grace. Therefore, I'm going to share with you guys this knowledge to get there. And by developing your spiritual being, you begin to see things, hear things, know things, uh, taste things, and smell things that other people don't do, they can't do. It's because they're dead, <laughs> okay? Um, once you become a spiritual being, you begin to sense the spiritual atmospheres. You begin to sp sense the spiritual world. And also in the understanding of the gospel, you begin to understand the will of the Father. And when you understand the will of the Father, the prayers you speak you're more confident in and the words that you do you're more confident right is because uh, there's a lot of people who pray like is it god is it your will or is it not your will and god says i don't answer the double-minded person he answers those who know and when you know the will of god you're more confident therefore if you're confident you believe and if you believe you have so with this knowledge guys it will open up your mind to another level uh, your relationship with the holy spirit will increase and you will become fruitful in your life, no doubt about it. And I put it on my life because I, I'm living it. So I'm excited, guys, to start this series. And so we're going to start in Matthew chapter 1. All right. So and we're just going to go through and I'm just going to go through the Gospels with you guys chapter by chapter and begin to uh, reveal uh, knowledge that a lot of people just don't know because the Bible is hard to understand. Uh, the first time I read it, it was I, I didn't understand it. It was until years of uh, studying and uh, another going doing research that I began to put everything together. And I want to do this really quick for you guys because I need spirit. We need spiritual workers out in this uh, world. You know, we need spiritual light in this world to begin to open up people's eyes. Okay, so um, so we're gonna start in genealogy of Yeshua the Christ. So I'm reading in New King James Version. So it begins uh, verse 1. The book of genealogy of Yeshua, Christ, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. And it starts going down the genealogy, uh, Abraham, way down to verse 5, which is Psalm 1. And I'll start in verse 5. 
And Solomon begot Boaz by Rahab, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. And before I go on, guys, um, a lot of people ask, why is this genealogy so important? Uh, in, other, in, the, in the other Gospels, it goes from Adam down to Christ, and other ones just a short one. But God is trying to reveal a message in it. And in the Hebrew, every name has a definition behind it. And when you begin to chronologically order these names from the beginning to Adam to Christ, and then uh, find out the definition of each name and go chronologically order, you begin to see that God was writing about Christ and what he was going to do to such a precision that it becomes uh, evidence that the spirit, the divine being that inspired people to write the Bible together operates outside of time and also has power over time so uh, i will put a link in the description where there's a person who actually goes by name by name and changes their definition and you can begin to read the gospel practically uh from the names of god uh to his ancestors that led to the birth of christ which is uh profound and amazing and you really begin to see god's real true will in christ and when you get that guys you get mentally you 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 free yourself because it's by knowledge that we deliver ourselves from lower uh realms of existence but the holy spirit uh highlighted verse six for me and it says uh and reading again and it says and jesse begot david the king now david the king okay is in the physical sense he was a physical re representation of what christ is going to do in the spiritual realm okay but i don't want to focus on david the king just yet it will be in the future video uh that we'll focus on david the king but i want to focus on jesse okay i want her to know what did god say over jesse that he had the honor to give birth to david who became the king of israel and the holy Sp and the holy spirit revealed to me isaiah 11 i don't even know how i got there but Isaiah 11 was where it was revealed. Um, before I go into it, is that uh, I want to talk about generational blessings and generational curses. Notice that I wanted to know what God said over Jesse's life. And it is very important. is because when God speaks over a family line, that blessing begins to pass down to all their generations. And same thing happens with curses. When your great ancestors probably got a curse and it passed down to uh, generations and it might be in your life and there's blessings that were passed down to you too because you guys remember when um god made a promise to abraham that i will bless you and i'll make you a father of many nations and you guys if you are familiar with the story of hagar and ishmael sarah wasn't able to give uh, birth so she told abraham sleep with my bond servant and give me a child and ishmael was born but later on, God uh, fulfilled his promise and gave birth to Isaac through Sarah, who was at old age. And Sarah told Abraham to kick out Ishmael and the bondwoman is because she didn't want them to partake in the inheritance. And uh, God came to Abraham and said to Abraham, listen to Sarah. And God told, uh, practically made Hagar and Ishmael leave. But God told Abraham that because Ishmael is your seed, I'll make him a into a nation. Okay, so... Even though, uh, even though God didn't bless the idea of Hagar, uh, bless the idea of Hagar giving them a son, right? The blessing that God spoke over Abraham's life was still passed down to Ishmael because Ishmael was a child of Abraham. I hope you guys are seeing this. And the whole point of being born again is to uh, break off old generational curses and blessings and partake in the blessings of Christ. Right, and then you then you receive uh, the patterns in your life which are good because generational curses are patterns that are negative. Okay, so we're gonna start reading in Isaiah, and Isaiah is the uh, revelation of Jesse, and this is why I wanted to focus on him. And it says in verse one, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So the Old Testament is a a historical account, historical account of what's going to happen in the spiritual realm. Okay, so someone who gave birth to Christ. So now it's saying a branch shall grow out of his roots. And now it's talking about Christ Yeshua. And watch this, guys, in verse 2. Uh, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of 
fear of the Lord. So those are seven spirits, guys. Okay, there's seven spirits, and these seven spirits are the seven components that make up the the mega spirit, so to say. And understand that the word of God is water. And when Christ entered into the world, which is light, and we know what happens when light hits water, it creates the refraction and it creates the rainbow. And how many colors does the rainbow have? Seven. Okay. And understand. And also the rainbow was a, a sign to uh, Noah that I will never ever flood the earth again. That the rainbow shall be a symbol to me to make sure to uh, not allow the rain to over overflow the earth again. But I want you guys to know, watch this, that Christ revealed who the Father was. Before Christ, came, before Christ came down onto earth, no one knew who the Father is. But it was when light uh, went through the water, which is water is the word of God, and it showed the seven spirits of God, which showed the full, full revelation who the Father is, is because Christ is the only one who saw the Father, right? And no one else, else has seen it. And I want, you, I want to read this to you guys. And it's, watch this, this is really cool. The, enti the entire rainbow of radiation observable to the human eye only makes up a tiny portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, about 0.0035%. This range of wavelength is known as visible light. Okay, guys? So, God, we know, understand that God is light, and uh, there's seven, seven colors that make up light. Okay? So... I wanted you guys kind of to think a little bit. So with our physical reality, what we perceive, right, to be truth, right, is only a proportion of the full electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, our eyes only see 0.0035% of true reality. Okay, because the because we live in a spiritual dimension, it's called Earth. And there's the spiritual dimensions that are, are higher and lower. But our physical bodies are only able to interact with the wavelengths that are visible. So we only can smell certain smells and we can only hear certain sounds. But there's a lot of things that we don't see, right? And there's and it becomes very ignorant of us if we want to say that we know the truth when we are only studying the things that we see, the things that we are visible, all right? And I want to say begin to say this is, becomes very critical to develop your spiritual being is because when you develop your spiritual being in other terms grow in the spirit is to uh, increase your electromagnetic field of uh, ranges of what you're able to be sensitive to therefore if you when you develop your spiritual being you become more sensitive to spiritual things okay in other the scientific terms is that when you uh, increase your vibrational state of being you become your range of sensitivity of the electromagnetic spectrum increases. Therefore, you're, you can physically begin to see into higher dimensions. You can begin to see angels and demons because they operate in different uh, electromagnetic fields or different heavens. I hope you guys... We will get into a lot more of that in when there is time for it, but I hope you guys are understanding this. And now, watch in verse, watch in verse 3 how everything uh, concludes with what I'm saying. It says in verse 3, His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Okay? You only see with your eyes 0.0035% of reality, guys. There's so much more information that you're not seeing and hearing, and we want to judge people. Right? Christ came here and he says, I'm not, I don't judge you according to appearance. I don't judge you according to flesh. And God said, Jesus said, Yeshua said to the Pharisees, you judge according to the flesh. I don't judge according to the flesh. I judge according to the spirit. And he says, even if I do judge, I judge righteously because I don't judge alone. I judge by the father. Who's the father? It is the all being, all knowing. It's the, it's the hundred percent and more. <laughs> right? Therefore, it's when you develop your spiritual being, your intuition the knowledge that you begin to perceive is of a higher uh, is of higher quality you begin to see things other people don't see and you begin to know things other people don't know and this is what Christ said i don't i don't judge the way you look i know things i know everything about your life and when i judge i love i judge accordingly i know things that have happened in your life in the past that have made you like this that have put you in these bondages and captivities and i understand this okay 
when a, and if a person had a beautiful life and they end up as a trashier person, there's more judgment on that person. But if the person was born and they had a very difficult, hard, hard life, they didn't have parents, they had bad parents or like mean uh, upbringing, God is going to be more merciful to that person. It's because God judges righteously and we judge according to the flesh. And David himself said, God, I'd rather be judged in your hands rather to be judged by people. You know, it's because God knows everything, right? And when you develop yourself in spiritual knowledge of love, you begin to know higher things so that you may uh, perceive reality correctly in your mind. It's because uh, we don't see with these eyes. We see with the heart. And when your electromagnetic field of your heart increases or it becomes spiritual, you begin to see reality in a whole different way. And you don't want to. See, and once you see reality at a higher plane, you don't want to go back. And uh, God blessed us with that, with that through Christ. So let's keep on reading. Um, verse four. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. As I was saying, he was going to judge righteously. He's going to he, he knows how to treat people according to their life. He sees everything in their life. We only see like a little fraction of a fraction and a second of a person. And we shouldn't be able to judge someone or condemn someone based on that. It's very ignorant. OK. And it says, he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. And that's what Christ did, man. That's why the Babylonian, Egyptian, Antichrist system hated Yeshua when he came. This is why there's so much slander against the gospel in this world, guys. It's because Christ destroyed, he freed people from these bondages that the world sets on people. Um, and then in verse 5, it says, Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. And understand this, truth needs to be around your waist, guys. Because symbolically, your waist uh, represents your mind. And if your mind is not uh, girded with truth, uh, it, you know how when you have a back injury, it sucks. Your whole life sucks. Your lower back injury, it hurts. And it just makes your whole day that much worse. Therefore, just same thing as with your mind. If your mind isn't uh, uh, tightened up and uh, secured with truth, your mind is going to have a lot of attacks, a lot of attacks. And you want to avoid that kind of stuff. You want your mind to be uh, gu guided and protected with wisdom and truth, that your mind knows the paths of truth, the path of peace. Because, hey, guys, in the end, we're all looking for peace and joy. <laughs> and if you find the truth, truth will send you in that direction. And you can just avoid a lot of the, a lot of the, crap in this world and your life gets 100 percent better and so i'm going to skip down to verse 17 and watch this is cool too so all the generations from abraham to david are 14 generations from david until the captivity in babylon are 14 generations and christ and from captivity in babylon until christ are 14 generations so there's three 14 generations guys notice the symmetry that uh, God puts in the Bible. Uh, notice the geometry in it, God. And God puts a lot of details in the Bible, and it's a historical account. Remember, guys, and your life is also a historical account. And is and that's when God says, "Be still and know that I'm God." Right? It's when you guys sit down and really begin to uh, reflect on life, and all the chaos that you think is in the past, and all these uh, coincidences, coincidences, and like. The unknown is when you begin to become still and begin to pray uh, for God to open up your eye. You begin to see that your whole life is full of patterns <laughs> because our whole life is mathematical, guys. It's we're operating on a mathematical code, you know. Uh, and you there won't be like unknown questions in your head. God will answer all these questions. You just pray. And, uh, and it, it is in reflection time when you begin to see positive uh, patterns in your life and negative patterns in your life. Uh, and the whole point of Christ being crucified on the cross is to eliminate all the negative uh, patterns in your life and to bless you with the, with the positive patterns in your life and more. With beautiful experiences, uh, getting to meet beautiful people with beautiful souls and to experience the divine life. This is what Christ gave us here came to give us right and you, to enter these beautiful realms of life you need knowledge <laughs> you need knowledge um and you and as you can see the whole world is against the truth um, 
to, to keep you in bondage, to keep you in uh, negative emotions. Um, and another, and I think I already mentioned, but uh, don't get frustrated when you don't understand the Bible, when it talks about certain numbers or it talks about certain parables. Don't get frustrated when you don't understand it. Know its truth and store it in your temple. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it out of your brain like, I don't understand it. I don't, uh, I don't receive it. Accept that it is true because you never know two days from now it will open up to you. Uh, three weeks and three weeks later, it's going to be the knowledge that you needed for it to open up a whole different realm in your mind. So don't throw it away and don't get frustrated because all this knowledge will eventually be helpful in the future. Don't don't throw away treasure, you know, throw away crap, throw away things that is vain. But when anything, all the word from uh, the Bible is treasure. Keep it. You don't understand it. It's okay. It's keep going. That knowledge is still stored somewhere in your temple. And at the right time, the Holy Spirit will bring that knowledge to your mind. And you're like, oh, now I get it. And in the understanding, you gain power. You gain strength. So back to the scripture. So now we are in verse 18. Now the birth of Yeshua Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. When we... Oh, and what, one thing I want to mention is that I will be a vessel who will advocate and express and acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is a goddess, that she is the feminine part of God, okay? Um, and these, And this will become very critical in the upcoming decades. And one thing to say is that, guys, if, if God made us in as our image, where did the woman come from? You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of scripture in the Bible that will support this. And I'll make probably a separate video to go in all of this is because when you begin to realize that the Holy Spirit is uh, the mother of God, the wife of Yahweh, your life changes. You're, the way you perceive reality changes is because this knowledge is profound. And this is why the devil hates women. This is why it's very uh anti-woman our religions are very anti-woman is because there's a very specific objectifying the spirit objectifying the holy spirit uh has dread consequences on your psyche and when you begin to pray for uh forgiveness on this part your brain begins to operate a lot differently uh, and uh you begin to be freed from a lot of unclean spirits okay this is why christ said you can talk about my father you can talk about me but don't talk about the holy spirit you guys recall that. So don't talk about anyone's moms. <laughs> so back to verse 19. Then Joseph, oh, uh, 20. But while he was thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to which, afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And I understand, like, why is it? How is a woman conceiving of the Holy Spirit? Is because there is a spiritual embodiment of the feminine body with the feminine energy. Okay, because the Holy Spirit had the Christ being born uh, in her, and it was in, through an embodiment that she was able to place the baby into uh, Mary. Okay, and uh, and then the funny thing is the occult understand this better than Christianity, and uh, and there's and there's and there's reasons to this. Uh, verse 21, and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, be done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And then Joseph being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she has brought forth her first son, firstborn son. And he has, he, he has, he called his name Yeshua. Another thing I want to uh, show you guys is that when the Bible says, uh, got to know him, know her, knew her, knew him, uh, it's talking about sex. Okay. It's talking about intercourse. And the idea is that when you have intercourse with another person, uh, you are being, uh, you're sh getting understanding from them. 
this is where it called it said soul ties are created from is because your souls are interconnecting and you're getting to know each other uh getting to know each other on the spiritual level okay and that's what it says that when the man shall leave the home the mother and father and he shall marry his wife and they shall become one flesh in other terms they become one temple and every time you have intercourse with some uh person you're being uh, emotionally and mentally tied to each other and this is where it's called the soul tie so getting to know getting to understand a person is because uh, love is understanding and uh, an expression of this love that God gave us onto us is through um, sexual intercourse. So just just for you guys to know. And then I want to go in chapter 2. So it says, Now after Yeshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Uh, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people Israel and notice that it was the sign in the heaven right the star in the heaven that pointed to a prophecy in the Bible which is uh, located in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 uh, a lot of people a lot of people uh, read, read the stars but if they're not translating the stars with truth the spirit of truth their interpretation of the stars is incorrect and there's a lot of people who have fell into zodiac reading and um a lot of people have lost their talents and their stars because of believing in a false understanding of the zodiac. Okay, because in the it's not zodiac. If you really look into it, it's called the Maseroth, and the Maseroth was spoken out by God. God laid out the Maseroth, and He said that I named stars by and I called the stars by name, right? And over time, guys, over the Babylonian time, Babylonian system. They changed the name of the stars, okay, because the initial 12 constellations were named uh, according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And they told the story of the virgin birth of Christ who came here to destroy the kingdom of darkness. And over time, they changed names. So a lot of the people who do the uh, the prophesying, the divination according to the st stars, the horoscopes, are basing their knowledge on false information therefore they're giving you a false uh prophecy a false understanding of who you are and it's because you're believing in a false understanding of who you are and coming into an agreement with spiritual beings or electromagnetic beings that sit behind these false prophecies and divination you come in agreement with them and because you believed in them you give them legal right to begin to manifest a life that you weren't supposed to live therefore this is what you get because of you believing in some tarot cards or believing in some zodiac stuff. And this is what God, Yahweh, the one true love uh, being gave you. And you see this distance between here and here. This is this distance that the devil is able to legally take away from you because you traded your destiny that God gave you with the destiny he spoke into your life. And this is a lie. Therefore, everything you're not going to live, God, the devil takes to his stronghold. And from there, he gives it to his uh, his servants, uh, who are the rulers of this world, uh, sitting in uh, heavenly places or dark places. And, and, and your destiny is stolen. And that's called star stealing, uh, talents uh, stealing, and things like this. But let's continue to read. <clears throat> and then I want to read... And then Herod, uh, secretly called the wise man, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he told them, go look out for this baby. And when you hear, when you find him, call, tell him, tell, tell me where he is so I can go and worship him. But um, we know that Herod had different ideas. He wanted to kill uh, the baby because he didn't want to lose his power. And, and then let's go drop into verse 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And this is going to be the end of uh, the last revelation, is that notice that the, these, these three gifts 
are talking about the identity of who Christ, who Christ is to be. See, these uh, magi, these uh, uh, people who followed the star understood that this baby is going to be three things. And this is why they gave them these three gifts. Okay, Gold was given to kings. Okay, And the other thing was that the second gift was frankincense. Frankincense was an insight, incense that was used in ceremonies by the high priest. And then the third, uh, third gift was myrrh. And myrrh was used as an anointing oil to anoint the prophet in the Old Testament. And if you notice that Christ is three things. He is a king, high priest, and prophet. And this is symbolical of a full kingdom. Right, And when you begin to study the word of God in the Old Testament, you begin to notice that there was always a king, that there was always a high priest, and there was also a prophet. In other words, Christ takes on all three of these roles in the kingdom of Yahweh, is which is the kingdom, the government that we live under, and our citizenship is there. But, all right, guys, that was the end of the our first lesson. I hope that this knowledge was insightful, that you learned a lot of things out of it, guys. And if you like this knowledge, hit the like button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Take care.